I still don't have an intro, but news one. Good evening, this is Alzi Sprocket here, and we are back in New Vegas with the New Vegas Randomizer. Remember last time, we started Old World Blues after helping Raul with his issues? Um, because we know there is a way to get rid of the bane of our existence, Logan's hey. Loophole. Um, but also, in between episodes, between the game running a little longer after I left it last time, and... Doing a little bit of inventory management just now, we have officially hit 1,500 hours in New Vegas. Congratulations, everybody. Round of applause for me and my playing this one game for a total of 1,500 hours. I trust this will find things in order and the riffraff contained. Probably. Um, but between this and what I played on console, which is a non-negligible amount of time. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1,500 hours. Feels strange. Feels good. Also, I also realized I haven't checked this cabinet yet. Well, that's full of useful things. We'll probably come back to that later. Anyways, today, it's time to continue on with Big Mountain. Now, obviously, we're going to continue all my friends have off switches, but also, there's a couple of locations out here that we discovered that we didn't totally check out in full last time. Let's go to Ulysses Point. That's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, here we go. Ulysses is Point. Down for the foreseeable future until weapon testing is resolved. I don't think weapon testing will ever be resolved in Big Mountain, so... Goodbye, Boomtown. We can still go there, though. We can ignore uh, Klein. Yes, and we have another marker from Ulysses. Because he used this as a little staging point. We just take a quick trip inside. Obviously, Ulysses being Ulysses, normally he's got a bit of a better, uh, you know, collection of things than whatever we're going to find in the uh, containers on our run. But still, we've got some patient logs, which are important. A sniper rifle suppressor, which is very handy if you don't have one already. A pair of binoculars couple bits, bits and pieces here. I think there's enough for a uh, weapon repair kit between all this stuff. Uh, excluding Wonder Glue. I haven't seen any Wonder Glue yet. An anti-material rifle. That's quite a find. If I had the skill for that, that would be great, but uh, yeah. 10mm submachine gun. That's kind of nice. Um, Open this one up. And it's empty. Some case boxes. 10mm combat knife. Silence 22. Some 22. Pistol powder. Yeah, if you're in need of a quick, like, top up of resources, uh, this is definitely a good place to go. This is also an interesting location because um, if you just take a look right here. Mutant Cave Fungus, which I believe is only really found in Honest Hearts. I don't think that actually spawns in uh, the base game anywhere. So, kind of proof that he's gotten something from uh, Honest Hearts there. I think that's the case. I might be wrong about that. And unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to open this lock. What's my perception up to? Ten. Yeah, so even if I boost it, I can't open that. Which is a shame. Oh well. Let's move on to the next location. Because we got two options here. We've got Higgs Village and this little mountain range over here. Higgs Village is slightly closer, so we'll head over there. And just approach the doors. This is a neat little location, Higgs Village. Uh, just loot these boxes, because you never know what you'll find. And here we are. In an odd little, uh, well, a village. Uh, very reminiscent of, if you've played Fallout 3, um, the, uh, uh, Stanislaus Braun, the, uh, is it Vault 92? 102? One of those. Um... Maybe. 
but also, um, a lot of the just, like, little towns and cities around Fallout 3 have that same kind of building. Um, but there's quite a few things around, too. This, uh, fountain here is full of caps. I have so many caps, I don't know why I'm bothering with this, but, hey. I just picked up a stim pack, actually, so totally worth it. And yes, each of these houses is the domicile of one of the think tanks. So, let's go take a look around and see if we can figure out whose house is whose. And I'm just going to loot through these real quick and point out any noticeable loot. But yeah, broken down robots. Uh, the house was is number 000. I think it's pretty obvious this is Dr. Zero. Um, not loot, but very interesting to see that, uh, yeah... Mr. House was, uh, Dr. Zero was not a fan of Mr. House, as we know already, but <laughs> I've always liked that, because I think this this picture's only in, like, two or three locations, and of course one of them is Dr. Zero with his, you know, angry knife throwing. Right up here on, on the uh, top of his terminal is the audio sample for the giant tarantula, which is a pretty, yeah, that's one of the sonic emitter files. Pretty useful one, I think, because I think Tarantula is the strongest, or one of the strongest. As if for Dr. Zero's house, if I head right over here to this house, number 101. Let's see. We've got a bar. Um, the Magna Carta, of course. And loads of alcohol. Yeah, this house has, this house especially, um... But another one here, too, I think, has a load of alcohol, which means if either you can sell it or use it for some pretty uh, handy buff now and again. Got a very nice sitting area, some pillows, and right upstairs, the book shoot is right up here. Very handy. There's more wine upstairs, coffee mug. Dr. Klein's scrubs are right upstairs, which confirms this is the house of Dr. Klein. Also, those scrubs, let's take a look at them real quick, because they're pretty good. Science plus 10, intelligence plus 2, and a value of almost 6,000. Even if you're not going to use them for that nice little buff, uh, that's pretty strong. And he has a bunch of burned and scorched books around, which means we'll definitely be back here once we get the book shoot up and running. That is all for Dr. Klein's house. On to the next. Ooh, this one does have a mailbox up front. The other ones do as well. 102. We've got another messy house this time. Cabinet back here. Yeah, this place is pretty a pretty messy domicile, isn't it? I think I know which one this is. I believe if I head upstairs be able to tell right away carton of cigarettes mentats a finger let's keep that out of the uh, <laughs> decision but definitely funny that uh, you know we just find a finger in this house more mentats more mentats the science skill book absolutely useless to us but I'll take it and more Mentats. Now, I accidentally skipped this, but back at the Think Tank... Ooh. Okay. Uh, back at the Think Tank, you can find a house, one of their rooms, that is absolutely chock full of Mentats. It is also locked away and damaged like this one. And there's a broken monitor here. This is Dr. Mobius' house, I do believe. I could definitely be wrong on that one. I feel like it's somebody else, but... Pretty sure it's Dr. Mobius. My own hand scared me just then. That's good. But yeah, like, the vast majority of looting here can be done a little bit later. Just because there are a bunch of items that you don't know how useful they are. Until you have a lot of the sync uh, mechanisms up and running. Um, so yeah, we'll finish looting this place later on. And check the next couple of houses. Since we're going to have to make another run to uh, Higgs Village anyway, I might as well be a little lighter on the looting. Mutilated organs. How nice. House 103. Bit of a nicer sitting area. Bird cages everywhere. 
That's a very important tip, I believe. You get a basement here. More bird cages right here. We've got the medicine skill buck, which is actually kind of useful. Boris's basement key. But yeah, we knew this was Boris because with all the bird cages, of course, he is the uh, animal uh, animal research, to put it, you know, nicely. It's probably more of mistreatment and mutilation considering Boris, but you know, that's this is his house. He some for some reason somehow has NCR money in his drawer, so that's kind of odd. Anyways. With that key, I can head down into this basement, which is a very creepy little thing. Which is, yeah, he has definitely been working away on some uh, experiments, even at home. And, uh, yeah, one of them, at least one of them, got loose. So that's fine. Ooh, and there's a ripper here. Totally forgot about that. It's in low condition. I'll leave it for now. Which means for the last two houses, it's pretty easy to narrow down whose house is whose. Um, but also, while we're here, if I just take a quick step out back, we've got Gabe's Bowl, which will be very useful later on. Um, because we need to find Gabe for good old Dr. Boris. Um, and he left Gabe here, but Gabe is not, not here anymore. And there's no body or bones or anything, so we don't know where Gabe could be. So it's worth checking X8 just in case, obviously. This house is number 108. Who could this be living here? It is, of course, if I just take a couple another looks around. Ooh, the opera si uh, singer sample. Which obviously... It be and, ooh, the jukebox. Right. So we know from when we spoke, quote-unquote, to Dr. Eight, that he had the sample, he had an audio sample, and he had the jukebox file to allow me to use the audio, change audio samples in his house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Uh, and I think there is a dinner plate there, so... Nope. Oh, there it is. Eight. Yeah, eight's a bit of a, uh... ADHD fellow, I do believe. On uh, ADHD, OCD. Hence the eights. I feel like I remember there being more stuff in here, but... Let's use, leave these, uh, mutilated organs behind in this garden gnome behind. I feel like we don't need those. Yeah, we don't really learn all that much about Dr. Eight uh, in the DLC, just because, you know, he can't speak and the other doctors don't really like him. Um, but it's kind of interesting to see that there is kind of this hint that he is a bit obsessive-compulsive, because again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's very clever. And I'm sure, if, like, there's something else in here that will tip us off to, uh, you know, the eights as well. Anyways, leaving that house. Oh, I should mention, by the way, uh, if you have, what's it, Wild Wasteland, do not go back here. <laughs> there is a unique death claw that is about two feet tall with extremely large amounts of health, and he will kill you. I have done it on many playthroughs, and I have died many times to it. Don't do that. Um, and last house, which of course, we know by our skills of deduction, it's Dr. Dollars, but let's just say there are other signs pointing to that too. Get some more alcohol, very valuable. Got a tool cabinet. And if I head right upstairs here... A nice little sitting area, and then this. Whatever this is. I mean, I get that it's supposed to be like a, um, a dressing room, but why the teddy bears? Don't, uh, don't worry about it, probably. Mannequins, teddy bears, different clothing. 
Yeah, so we know from Dala's uh, enjoyment of the human form that this is definitely Dr. Dala's. Um, but we can leave. So let's head right out. And I didn't mention it then, but we did get the speech skill book uh, recipe, which is very nice. Believe me, that is a good one. You know, the speech skill is kind of, kind of good. And I think there's one more thing in here that I want to find first before we leave. I just hop across the roofs real quick. Yeah, right up here. We have a skeleton with a couple beers, an easy locked footlocker, with a little bit of ammo on this occasion. And he's just up here on, I think this is Mobius's roof. I don't know if there's ever any explanation of who this is or what they're doing here, but they're here. <laughs> Yep, he's just there. Uh, anyways, with that taken care of, take that coffee mug, because that'll be useful eventually. We can head out of Higgs Village. Uh, prepare for an ambush, because I'm pretty sure there's a guaranteed one when you leave Higgs Village. Ooh, some missiles. What have we got in here? A clipboard. Clipboards will be useful eventually, so. Uh, let's go... How many hive missiles? Eh, just normal missiles. For some reason, I remember there being an ambush. This being a pretty... Beware Dr. Mobius's army. His robo-scorpions crawl everywhere in search of intelligence to devour and stupefy. Thank you, uh, Boris. I think that's Boris. Yeah. Um, just checking around the back, because I can't remember if there's anything really back here. But also, if we head outside of the perimeter fence again, we'll get teleported again. Which is nice for no other reason than... I believe there's a challenge related to it, so let's do it, shall we? Yeah, we get a small handful of experience for doing that. So it's Higgs Village investigated. So I'm just going to drop off some stuff real quick and talk through our new personality modules. Um, yeah, so let's do that real quick. Hey, Jukebox. And what's your purpose here? Can you do anything like that for me? Got yourself a sonic emitter, don't you? Thought so. Bring that old thing on in here and bring me some sound samples and I'll make that baby sing. Or scream, <laughs> if that's what you want. And I found a sound wave file for you. Right on, baby. Just plug it in and I'll mix you up a sweet, sweet sound. We get Opera Singer, Tarantula, both added. And we can recalibrate at any time using him. Do you play music? Mm, used to. Long time ago. Then old Dot Moe ripped out my music drives and stuck in more acoustical processors. Guess you could say I got the blues, even if I can't play them no more. So yeah, we now have a uh, jukebox that cannot Gator, sing. Gator. A jukebox that cannot play music. Bit of a sad story, but hey, he's happy. And the book shoot. Ah, good day, citizen. Library processing unit 232.7 is online and ready to eradicate sedition. Eradicate sedition? 
Of course, citizen. That's my duty and sole joy in life. All those books from before the war, full of seditious, treasonous, complicated thoughts. Just dump them in and lickety-split. I'll have them pumped, scrubbed clean, and pressed out again, clean and white, and sedition-free. And can you do anything besides processing books? What good is eradicating sedition if the malcontents have ready access to the means to make more, citizen? I could also process pencils and clipboards. Wait a moment. Pencil processors offline? Pencil processors offline? Apologies, citizen. It seems traitors have absconded with that module. If you can find a backup copy of the module, I will happily eradicate your ability to create seditious literature. Gotta love the book shoot. <laughs> so you make blank books? What's the point of that? Blank books are better for the mind, citizen. Real science by real men in lab coats has proved that introducing outside thoughts confuses the brain. Blank books encourage the reader not to question, but to blindly and zealously accept what's put in front of him. Also, I suppose you could use them to keep a journal. But those books are a last legacy of the time before. You can't destroy them. Citizen, that sounds dangerously seditious. If my reindoctrination module was installed, I'd take care of that for you. Sadly, that system was cut for budget concerns, so you'll have to perform your own indoctrination. I see. Now, to begin with, you'll need a cage that can fit over your head and a sack of mole rats. Uh, blank books, huh? Yeah, I think I can find a use for those. Now you're thinking like a citizen, citizen. And if I sit, uh, I had some other questions. Questions are dangerously close to independent thought, citizen. And seditious materials. Fantastic, citizen. Just input your quantity of seditious material on my interface, and in no time at all, I'll have you a beautiful, clean book. Won't that keep you happy and docile, citizen? And process books. You remove the pre-war book and add a blank book. I guess that's all we had. Proletariat means. Do you know what that makes you? Well read and erudite. The four of kinds. Amazing. So those two are now online. I'm just gonna drop some stuff off in here and then head out. There we go. And if I just take the blank book over to the workbench over here, I think we can make C4 explosives. That's interesting. We probably don't need those. Good to know though. Um, is it miscellaneous? Yes, okay, so we need blank books, wonder glue, and the recipe, the uh, given recipes to make the uh, skill books for those given books, which is very handy because medicine and speech are both skills that I would not mind boosting. Uh, eventually, of course. And as for wonder glue, when we get to uh, being able to process things through him, uh, he creates wonder glue for us. So, perfect. Anyways, with that taken care of, take another step outside, and let's see. Next location we want to go to, we're actually going to go back to uh, the transmitter array real quick. And now that we're here, if we just take a look around real quick, we're safe. But yeah, right up there earlier, we were getting shot at from someone. So, let's go investigate. We got a little bottomite over there, and a trauma harness, trauma, trauma harness over there. But it has a fat man, so we're gonna ignore it. Oh dear, I forgot that they're gonna have fat mans. They normally can't, but it's the randomizer. Anything can have a fat man. How could it be so silly? Um, is there anything here? Some eggs. The Constitution of the United States. But yeah, if I just sneak around here, up here on this cliffside, there is a weird little cave that we definitely want to visit. And there's a big cannon. We'll be visiting that in a second, too. Um, is there anything in these? Or is it just a proof that 
things have definitely escaped. Yes, the cuckoo's nest. Very interesting little location. Uh, doesn't normally have Ganon family Tesla armor, but I'll take it. I also just noticed that it's medium armor, which makes me, I'm pretty sure that the Ganon armor is like the only medium power armor. So that's interesting. Uh, yeah, it makes sense the Lobotomites know where I am. This is kind of their house. Come back here. Come back here. Stop running. No, don't run towards this direction, please. More lobotomites, huh? Ow. There we go. Just a little bit shot. That's fine. Let's take all their things. Just because I can repair my armor with their armor, so why not? And what does this guy have? Blood sausage. Ooh! Luckily, that's a rocket. That's a red glare. That's the good news. The bad news is that's very loud. Ow. Ow. Come back here. Hey. I think we found the guy with a fat man. Neat. 